Howdy, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, did we get a lot of drops from the Reignited Trilogy this week. While some of it was anticipated, they really surprised us with the sheer amount of footage they were showing, plus the little bit of screenshots and concept art they shared as well. It's a lot to take in and keep up with, so if you're behind on the Spyro news from Gamescom, allow me to get you all caught up. Links to the original videos will be in the description. I will not be showing all the footage in its entirety or we'd be here all day, so let's just go over the highlights. As always, this recap will be in chronological order by game. Starting off, we got full gameplay of Stone Hill. We've seen a lot of Stone Hill already, but they've made some changes and showed off even more of the level. Others have pointed out the dynamic music during Spyro's idle animations, and I think it sounds great. My preference for the dynamic remastered soundtrack and the original music has thus far varied depending on the level. In this level, I think I prefer the dynamic music. Notice here that while the burning sheep animation is the same, they made the butterfly appear instantly instead of waiting for the sheep to disappear. I've noticed that in the old game, internal areas were colored in blues to represent lower lighting, but the remastered keeps the colors of the architecture consistent on the inside and the outside. You notice this inside the main part of the castle, the well, the cave at the beach, and in the room where you rescue Lindar. The fairy in the first game now talks, just saying a simple hi Spyro, which adds to the feeling that this world is actually alive and not passive around the player. They've added rocks to the cliffside all around, making the name Stone Hill more relevant. The color of the beach blends in more with the stone cliff and walls surrounding it. We got a nice look around the top of the castle. I noticed that you can hear a change in the sound of Spyro's feet hitting the ground, depending on whether he's running through the grass or along a hard surface. They've also added the iconic sound to opening the gem chests. The dragons are all, yet again, very different from one another. Lindar, I think, is an inventor or a clockmaker. He looks like he has aviator goggles, so I'm not sure how to interpret him. His dialogue is delivered well, and I really like his lighter wings. Maybe he's a time traveler since he appears to adjust a watch before he disappears? Gavin is the barista, I guess. I was thinking carpenter or something, but he's got a teapot. He has tattoos, a mustache, and he has gauges in his horns. Okay. His design disappointed me, to be honest. It's not bad, but the OG Gavin was much better looking. Still not a fan of mustaches on dragons. Gildas reminds me of the ancient Greeks for some reason. I guess it's the giant smock. He's a painter like Nevin, but his paintbrush is massive. Gildas is clearly not as neat as Nevin with all the paint on his wings, arms, and smock. I imagine Nevin's far more uptight, and Gildas teases him about needing to loosen up. Aster is amazing, though we've already gotten a quick look at him from the exclusive Comic-Con poster. I'm guessing he's one of those dragons that keeps up the tradition of passing down oral history through stories. And Spyro's reaction to his attempt to tell a story is priceless. You'll notice after you rescue all the dragons in a realm, text pops up on the bottom letting you know you found them all, which adds more consistency to the three games. We didn't get to see the Egg Thief, but his voice has been pitched higher this time to make it closer to the original. While it's not exact, it's much better than when we heard him in the B-roll clip from Magic Crafters. That's all we got from Spyro 1. Moving on to Spyro 2, we got a bit more footage from Glimmer. I also greatly enjoy the remastered music here. I didn't notice too many changes, but they added grass to this section here, and the sound of the ladybugs is different. I'm digging the way the giant gems look sticking out of the ground. We got a big drop with the reveal of the cutscene that occurs right after you exit Glimmer. This looks unfinished to me just by looking at the castle. It's rather dull and lackluster considering all the other footage we've seen, and I can almost guarantee you that the flag of Avalar isn't just red. It'll have a design on it. As for the Ripto flag, it currently has his concept art on it. Maybe that's final, or maybe it's a placeholder. I believe this footage is an earlier build. The lighting in the forest by the Glimmer portal looks really well done, but again, it still looks like it needs touched up. I'm torn on Allura. When you see the full body shots, I think her design looks great, but up close, there's something off about her face. She no longer has her fox tail, and her top half is covered in fur. Her shirt is more dressy and made with what looks like leaves. Her tail is adorable, and she both appears and acts younger than the original Allura. Not sure how to feel about the younger vibe. 
but I've always been a fan of Spyro and Allura, so perhaps that brings their ages closer together. We also get to see this concept art for her, which to me looks even better than her in-game model. The voice acting is top-notch, and I'm digging the inflections and the animations that go with it. Alora seems to view Ripto as more of an annoyance than an actual threat. There's more believability here in terms of Spyro building relationships with those around him. It's also more playful this time around, and I love how Spyro is so obviously preoccupied with her legs, wondering what kind of creature she is. She bends down to get his attention, which is adorable. We get a brief look at Hunter here, and he does resemble his hero's tail counterpart on some level. I prefer the OG Hunter though, I think. He was cuter, and I prefer the voice of Greg Berger. I do miss the eerie sounds at the beginning of the cutscene in the original, and I hope they add those back somehow. We also got a brief look at Moneybags being kicked out of the castle. He lands on the platform where we meet him to learn swimming, so again, more consistency. We got some more idle springs, including the opening cutscene, which has a bit more added to it like the Colossus one did. I'm only going to point out a few changes, first of which is the skybox. It's closer to the original now, I think I preferred the way they had it before, but this is a more faithful recreation of the level, and fans appear to approve of this change. Zoe is brighter, they lightened her up a lot. The orb is now green instead of washed out, and the animation is less intense. The power-up gate now has particle effects, and as I said, the rain dance was not complete in the previous footage we saw, so yes, of course they put in the cloud and completed the scene. We also get a look at the talisman from this level, and we get to see a little bit more of it than we did before. The last thing we got from Spyro 2 were some screenshots and concept art. Starting with Magma Cone, they were able to make this realm look much more industrial, especially inside the volcano. On the outside, you can see much more culture, just like the other levels. There are banners, which suits the party theme of this level as well, and I adore the fawn head on the wall there. It's so cool! In this screenshot, we see the rock enemies in this level. The small dudes look like jerks, just like they used to. And the earth shapers look like they really did pop out of the ground. Like daisies! I have no idea how the fawn is holding that ball of hot rock and magma, but okay. Then there's this screenshot of Spyro perched on one of the pillars overlooking the lava. Not much to say about it, but it's another one of my favorite images. Our last two screenshots from this game were of Winter Tundra, and boy does this homeworld look beautiful. Look at that sky and the moon. I can tell I'll have fun playing here again. There's a door in that wall that wasn't there before. Maybe the homeworlds of all the games are connected through those doors? We also got a good look at the castle, which is really neat. Love the colors. The opening at the top of the stairs to face Ripto looks appropriately shadowed and menacing. I'm so looking forward to this game. Besides the reveal of Alora, the other thing that has fans losing their minds is the footage we've gotten from Spyro 3. We got a short glimpse of Sunrise Spring, complete with the purple filter that will be removed eventually. We also got our first real look at Sheila with this screenshot here, and while her new design has caused a great deal of controversy, I love it. I like it better than the Alora and Hunter designs, honestly. When we got the blurry image of the reimagined game covers, I was highly skeptical about Sheila having hair. But seeing her full model, I think it looks cute. She's got these ponytails and she looks like an old school female explorer. I also like the fact that her toes are darker, as you can see in this footage. When Sheila kicks, she stops rather than continuing a forward momentum. That's an improvement on the controls, I think. We see the Rhinoc houses are larger and they have the same sound when you destroy them as the gem chests. For real, I can't wait to see how different this level feels. Sheila is so adorable. At Gamescom, the three playable demos were Stone Hill, Idol Springs, and Sunny Villa. And man, do fans love Sunny Villa. First, we got this screenshot, which is breathtaking. Spyro perched on top of anything is the cutest in my book. This level was already full of detail, and Toys for Bob ramped it up. It's a one-to-one -one remake. I know some people are concerned about the egg hatching animations, but once again, I doubt this is finished. Why did they ask for the game to be delayed? That's why, to fix things like this. Like the adult dragons in Spyro 1, these baby dragons are all going to be different. Some I'm going to like, 
some I'll just tolerate, but overall they've done a great job infusing their own imaginations into this project. The real show stealer in this level was the skateboarding section, however. We first got to see Hunter here in his skateboard gear. I thought he looked and sounded like a stoner, which aggravated me, but I'm glad he looks better when he's not wearing this. I'll learn to get behind his voice eventually. It's not bad. The skateboarding is amazing. They added more believability by having Spyro bite his board when he spins to keep himself on it. Standing on the board, his legs are staggered, and when doing jumps, his back legs lift off of it. I'm not sure how much more realistic you could make it for a dragon on a skateboard. Spyro's crashing animation is similar, but his board breaks this time. One of my favorite things about this, weirdly, is the metal that they have on the ramps. I didn't know if it was supposed to be metal originally. I thought it was just painted, but here it actually reminds me of metal roofing and the sun reflects off of it realistically as you move around. My only complaint about the skateboarding section is the floor tiles. The two different colors make it feel busy and my eyes have a harder time focusing. I hope they make the tiles all one color, preferably the darker one. Lastly, we got a good look at Cloud Spires. Again, this level is pretty one-to-one -one from the original. I love the air effects from the winged Rhinox. The skybox is beautiful, as is the background full of spires. I think the NPCs in this level are cuter than the ones from Sunny Villa, which I was not expecting. I want a plushie of one of these guys. Again, the voice acting is spot on. They sound like kids, actually. This part of the level looks unfinished, lighting-wise, and there's no sound from the spirits when you flame them. Of course, there might not be if they made the bell sound so prominent. One last thing, for anyone who didn't go to Gamescom and isn't familiar with First Four Figures, they've created this PVC of the Reignited Spyro that will be available for pre-order sometime soon. If you're a collector or just want at least one outstanding piece of merchandise, please follow F4F and join their official collectors club on Facebook. I'm waiting on my Spyro resin and I've pre-ordered the Crystal Dragon as well. And you'd be correct if you thought I planned to pre-order this little guy here. Well, if that's not enough to pump you up to play Reignited, I don't know what more you want. The more I see, the more anxious I am to get my hands on this game. November can't come soon enough. That's going to wrap up this week's Reignited recap. Go ahead and subscribe if you're interested in more Spyro content from me. And as always, I'm Lynn Wolf, signing off.